everyone. Trev here from Norwood Sawmills, here to talk to you about a really awesome new product we have uh, regarding the guide systems on the HD models. Um, this is an upgrade from the existing systems. Uh, the old systems, there's nothing wrong with them. They're tried and true and tested and work really well. But with some engineering, we've come up with uh, a different design that we think works a little better and gives you guys an advantage when you're cutting. We're calling it the 4-axis trunnion. It's retrofittable to the HD36 version 1, HD36 V2, and the MX models, if there's any of you guys out there that have that uh, version still working out there, and I think there is. Uh, with us today is our Chief Sawyer, Brian Shellswell. He's going to talk a little bit about the advantages of this guide and uh, what it can do for you versus what you have on the machines right now. Bright, can you give us a little update on what, what yes, this is going to do versus the other? Absolutely. So this was the existing ceramic guide that, we, that came on the LM34 and the HD36 V1 and V2. Uh, great guide system. Um, it's set up so that it just goes around, around the blade. So it's, it's to contain your blade so that it... it, it uh, to lessen the chances of your blade going up or down in the cut. So it really just traps the blade. Traps the blade, so you've got a ceramic upper, a ceramic lower, and a ceramic in the back. Um, so when the blade's set up just like it is right now, where it's going true across the band wheels, um, it'll just, it would just come in and go around it. Um, now what we've done now with the trunnion guides, and I've just mounted the blocks on there, they'll hold the actual roller guide. And the roller guide is actually what's gonna come in contact with the blade. Right. And it's gonna help control the blade. Right. So this is just really, instead of just trapping the blade, with, the new, with these new four axis trunnion guides, they're gonna control the blade. So when we install them in the blocks, they slide in over top of the blade. Um, and then, you, then you've got an up and down adjustment on this block here, which is gonna, which what you're gonna do is you're gonna, you're gonna push down on the blade and deflect it off of it being straight across the band wheels. Right, and that's what's key, right? That's what's really gonna give you more stability, little better control, because you're actually coming off the band wheel and coming down underneath that guide roller, correct? You're, yeah, so you're coming, that guide roller's, yep coming down onto the blade and pushing the blade down. Right. So it's not just, it's, it's putting down pressure on the blade, but then it's got a, what we call the trunnion style, is now with this shaft, when it's in that guide block, we can actually tip it forwards, up right. or down. We can tip it up or down. Right. And what that's going to allow us to do is adjust the lead of the blade. The lead. I was just going to ask you about blade lead. Gets talked about all the time, but I'm not sure everybody understands totally what that is and what you're actually doing when we say blade lead. And that's controlling that pitch and angle of that blade as it's going straight across your cut. Correct. So when when the so when this is in here and you're going to adjust it, um, there's a few different ways you can do this. Sometimes I'll just use a quick torpedo level. So the idea is, is when you put this level on your actual sawmill track and you check and your blade is, your, your track is actually perfectly level. Right, so you're set up properly. So you're set up properly. You look, you see your bubbles perfectly centered on, in the level. Then what you're gonna do is when you've got these trunnion guides, the four axis trunnion guides installed, what you're gonna put the torpedo level on one of the straight teeth. Right. Now you're pushing the blade down, and then we're gonna adjust, make our adjustments, either tipping it up or down. And that's key point, straight tooth, because if you're on one of the wrong, which ones are turning right or left, you're gonna put your- It'll give you a false reading You're gonna be level. wrong, and it could really mess up what you're trying to do here. Yep. So very important little piece, guys. So you're gonna put that on your straight tooth, then you're gonna make your adjustments. There's an upper and lower bolt, or a, sorry, a front and back bolt which allows you to make those adjustments to tip that shaft either up or down. Right, and that's pushing the block inward, which will tip it up, and then the back will push it down, I would yeah. guess, right? Okay. Yeah, so then you make your adjustments there, and you're gonna get that bubble perfectly centered, just like you did when you were on the track. Right. And that is the proper way of setting up your blade lead to, to make it cut to perfection. Right. Now, this this Strunion system, combined with the new Stellacut blades that we're selling, Yeah. 
it's just it's your sawing experience is just going to go through the roof major upgrades major upgrades major it's, upgrades it's, it's just giving you like i said you're 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 taking control of the blade with one of the best blades on the market it's so accurate with those stella stellite tips welded on it I, that... I like to call those our high test blades yes that's oh. what that's what i call that stelly cut our high test blade now let's right let's talk more about the down pressure yes how much down pressure should someone be applying to this when they're pushing down on that blade you're gonna want to so when the blade's set up true across the band wheels like it is right now right and i'm not putting any down pressure on these right now so i'm going to loosen these two bolts off right and i'm going to slide that roller down and i'm going to deflect that blade down about an eighth of an inch an eighth okay so what i'll do is i'll install the rollers on both sides i'm going to deflect them about an eighth of an inch down right then i'm going to take measurements from the blade to the bunk. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. Right, so. And then I'm gonna fine tune it so that it's the same on both sides. Just like we did when we leveled the saw head, we're gonna do the exact same procedure when we start putting pressure down on this blade. Absolutely, so when you're leveling your saw head, when you lift the saw head up off of the lower side frames, it should be equal distance from the blade to the bunk without even installing the trinium guides on your mill. When you have that set up accurately, then you go and install your trending guides. You're gonna do the same, so we know our saw head's level. Then we're gonna deflect the blade down and then we're just gonna make sure it's the same on both sides. Right, so, so a few key pieces here that really matter and proper setup before you even begin this exercise is really key. To success. Um, absolutely. Set yeah. the saw head up. Okay, so, it's so make, sure you, make sure you're set up right, guys. It's really, really important before you try and do this. This isn't the magical uh, white pony. It is the actual piece that's going to give you some really high test cutting, but you got to get there in the right steps. Because we want our saw head set up level. So when we adjust this guide in and out, it's also staying level. Right. If the side's not level, it's going to be on an angle. Right. So it's very important to set that up properly so that it's going in and out perfectly level also. Right. We don't like crooked lumber. So we, once you're set up, we, we've adjusted our the lead of the blade by tilting the ro roller guide. Uh, we've made sure that it's equal distance, equal down pressure on each side. And we also want to make sure that the roller's the right distance in and out. Yes. So when the blade's on there and it's tracking perfect like this one is right now, we want that uh, the back of the blade to be off the back flange on that roller by about a sixteenth of an inch. About a sixteenth. That's so it. when the blade's on there and you're not cutting and it's spinning, it's not rubbing on that back flange. Right. And then once you go into the cut, we want it to touch right away. Okay. Because we don't want to put too much back torque on the blade. Right. When we're cutting. Yeah, because it could skip down underneath. So, so there are three really easy to set up settings that are crucial to for your best sign experience. Right. Right. Now, one other piece to this to this nice new unit is this guy right here. Yes. This is your lower ceramic. So now we have the roller pushing down on the blade, controlling it. It's controlling the lead of the blade. And then we have this ceramic. Yes. And the ceramic goes on underneath the roller. Yes. So, so when we slide the ceramic in there, now we can now we have a ceramic pad underneath the blade, which is help also helping us control that blade. So if that blade hits something and wants to deflect down, we've got the ceramic in there just giving us a little more stability. So we're still trapping it. We're still trapping it, but we're controlling it then trapping it. Right. Right, whole different world of adjustment and I guess what you could say, uh, just next level tuning on your HD mill. So when we set that lower ceramic up, we're gonna do it just like you did when you had your ceramics on your HD mill, your right. HD 36, 34. You wanna have a, a, a little bit of light in between the ceramic and the bottom of the blade. Right. We don't want it rubbing on there and creating a bunch of heat or it's gonna deteriorate your blade life. So just, just, we just want to, like a hair, some people like to use a thin piece of paper, just add a bit of spacing in between the ceramic and the bottom of the blade. Yeah. And then we want to make sure that that ceramic is centered on the blade body because when that blade goes back a sixteenth of an inch, we don't want the teeth to start hitting that ceramic. Yeah. So we want it almost, the back of the ceramic to be just right almost on the flange on the roller guide. Okay. And when you do that, you're going to get it set up perfectly and you're, you're, you're ready to cut.
I think that uh, almost covers it. Now this guide here, it looks a little bit tight to the guard, um, but I guess there's no worries there because you've got a little bit of adjustment. There's some adjustment up and down on that guide. And one thing to check too is when you have your, your guards on your sawmill, Yeah. Um, a lot of times when we mount our guards, we just put the bolts through and they're, they're right at the bottom location, yeah. the bottom distance. Yes. So if you find it's hitting that, the guide on the on the non-operator side, you might want to loosen your bolts that hold the the guards on and just raise them up. Give a them a bit. little bump up. Get Some guys what they'll, do is they'll loosen the bolts that hold loosen all the bolts that hold the guards on, then lower the saw head all the way down until they hit the guards oh, at the hey, lower side frame idea. and just push it up a bit. Or some yeah. guys will put a little spacer in there yeah. just to push them up a yeah. little bit. Yeah, great idea. Great idea. Well, I think that covers it. Uh, did you have anything more you wanted to share on that? Uh, no, no. I think that covers it, everybody. That is a fantastic new upgrade for the HD Series sawmills. Please give us a call if you have any questions. We've got great customer service staff that can answer them all for you.